What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're going to be jumping into the new main activity for Season of the Splicer, which of course is Override, and we're going to talk about what to expect from the new 6 player mode, but also the upgraded Helm Splicer Hub, where we get access to the new loot system and vendor. But we'll also cover how to do the upgrades, the actual rewards themselves, and a general guide for the new key activity in Season 14. So I hope this video is useful as always, and if you do enjoy it, feel free to get subscribed and I'll keep you posted on all of the new content. But otherwise, for now, let's get into it. Initially, there is a kind of intro quest to get us into the new content and get us access to the Splicer Gauntlet, as well as the override mode and the various upgrades. So we need to get that done. And from there, starting out with the Splicer Gauntlet, with this, we can create and hold ether keys, which allow us to open chests at the end of override runs. So it costs 50 ether to create a key code, and ether is obtained by completing playlist activities, public events, and defeating combatants. So for example, we get 25 ether for heroic public event completions, but it can be earned in the playlists as well, and then each 50 ether that we socket into the gauntlet will give us a key code, kind of like a hammer charge from last season. And so that's going to let us actually open the chest at the end of an override run. But the gauntlet has a series of upgrades and perks which can be unlocked. And to do this, we need to spend decrypted data, which is a different currency. And this is done at the splicer servitor in the helm. So if you head into the splicer gauntlet upgrade menu, there are three different tiers of upgrades which we'll be doing. So tier one upgrades cost 100 decrypted data. Tier 2 costs 300 each, and then Tier 3 costs 500 each. So there is Code Strider, additional platforms can be utilized in the VEX network, which literally means additional platforms inside of the override mode, but also override efficiency, where override chests have increased rewards, and standard VEX chests now have a chance to drop seasonal gear, with Conflux chests having a chance to drop Umbral Engrams, and can drop up to one focused Umbral Engram per week. There's Deletion Exclusion, where laser and wall defenses now deal slightly less damage when you're inside the Vex network. Ether Filter, where defeated combatants now have a higher chance to drop Ether. Halt and Open Fire, where ammo replenished by ammo crates in Override is slightly increased. And then we've got Memory Expansion, where the Gauntlet's Ether capacity is increased by 50, and its key code capacity increased from 3 to 4. And basically, across the different tiers, we just get better versions of those perks. And there are some that are currently hidden, but in terms of earning decrypted data to actually do those upgrades, it does drop from enemies occasionally, but we can consistently get 30 decrypted data per override run when we open the chest. So farming out ether initially to make key codes to then spend opening chests in override will always award us with data to make upgrades at the splicer gauntlet. But like last season, we can see that certain seasonal challenges will also give us significant drops of decrypted data. So if we focus on finishing seasonal challenges with those big drops, and then grinding override in order to unlock all of the upgrades, which give us more chances of rewards more often. This is essentially the process for the season. We can also spend decrypted data on new Umbral Engram focusing options of the Prismatic Recaster, so look out for those as we get the upgrades. But additionally, when we earn decrypted data, we earn reputation ranks for the Splicer Servitor as well, and this is what will allow us to slowly unlock this season of the Splicer mods that we can see in the menu. In terms of the rewards from the override activity though, we'll see weapons dropping from the specific pool for the activity, as well as weapons from the season pass. So there are things like the Chroma Rush, which is a rapid fire frame auto rifle, the Grid Skipper Pulse Rifle, which is a rapid fire frame as well. And then we also have the Farewell Sidearm, which is a lightweight frame. The Sojourner's Tail Shotgun, which is a precision frame shotgun. And then you've got things like the Ignition Code, which is a lightweight frame grenade launcher as well as the Shattered Cypher machine gun. So that's the kind of core loot table. Once again, some of those items dropping from the Season Pass. And also when you complete runs, you'll get drops of the season-specific armor for Season 14 as well. For a basic rundown of how the mode actually works, yes, we are banking moats once again. So initially it's just kill enemies, pick up the moats and bank them in the middle. There is a section where a portal will open and essentially a couple of players have to head through and destroy the champion enemy inside. These enemies drop data spikes and if you've gone through the portal, once you've taken champions down, you can head back through the portal and deposit that data, which is essentially the same as banking moats in the middle. When you get to a certain progress threshold, essentially the game spawns a load of blockers that close the bank down. And these are intrusion detectors, so we've got a bunch of these tanky enemies that spawn in, they need to be taken down. And there's also a phase where we essentially have oracles blocking us from continuing to make progress. These need to be destroyed before we can hack the central tower. And whenever you see them come up, we need to actually shoot the red oracles that appear. And for each phase that we complete, 
we can see there are a series of different platforms we need to jump up the tower in order to hack into it, which will allow us to continue scoring. So that is the basic kind of mechanic of the first section of every override run. And it is easiest if you think of it as a series of different blockers of various progress thresholds. Bear in mind that you'll need champion mods, which you can take a look at before you launch the mode. Those mods will probably change on a daily basis. But there's always kind of a second phase to each override run, which is kind of when we go into the Vex network and we have to head through a series of different jumping puzzles and portals, some of them blocked by oracles that need to be taken out. But there are also kind of security walls that we need to avoid. And ultimately, it accumulates in a boss fight right here, which pretty much consists of clearing all of the enemies, doing damage to the boss, destroying the oracles that are shielding the boss, some of the challenging enemies inside of the boss room will also drop data spikes. And when you're in that final boss room, there is another bank that we can deposit those data spikes into in order to keep up maximum damage and prolong those damage phases. So there are a few little mechanics going on, but nothing too crazy. That is a basic overview of how that mode works. And if you want some extra gameplay of a run through the override right here, you can check it out at the end of the video. But for this initial look at the new activity, the loot system and all those kind of things, hopefully that's a pretty good breakdown of what to expect. So if you have any tips for other players, be sure to drop them in the comments section down below. But for now, that's everything we have to round up in this video. So I hope you guys have found it useful. And if you have, a rating below really does help us out. Also, feel free to get subscribed and I'll keep you posted with more D2 content. But for now, whatever you guys get up to, I hope you have an awesome day. Yeah.